Hi, my name is Christina, and this is tribute number two to all the LGBT veterans out there. This is where I'm going to do two reviews of two different stories, one old, one new, and all the characters are going to be LGBT characters that are serving or have served in the military. The first one is going to be Resilient Heart by Annabeth Albert. Everybody that knows me knows that I have the hugest crush on Annabeth. I will read anything that she uh, writes, and if you've never read anything of hers, this is going to be a really good book to start out with because it really brings, like, it shows her writing style perfectly. When the book first starts, we meet Xander, and Xander is in the hospital in Washington, D.C., recovering from, one, losing his hand and having multiple reconstructive surgeries on a foot. Uh, he is suffering clinical depression, but he will not admit it. He has PTSD, but he will not admit it. He doesn't want to do anything but get out of the hospital. He doesn't want to contribute to his well-being. He doesn't want to do therapy sessions, whether it be mentally, emotional, or physical. He just wants out. This is when Mackie rolls in. Mackie and Xander were friends with benefits. And they were both in the netcom, both thinking that they were safe where they were. They didn't have to worry about life or limb. And both just kind of fun-loving, care-going guys. Mackie is a bisexual, and he has just kind of been sowing his wild oats, while Alexander has kind of wanted a little bit more. And he kind of made this clear here recently. And Mackie was just kind of like, eh, you know, we have plenty of time. Obviously, time is not of the essence. Mackie decided to cancel all plans that he had after his last tour overseas, and he is going to now take care of Alexander. He has come up with this grand scheme, this great plan of what he's going to do, yet he has like the most unwilling participant in this story. I liked that Annabeth really brought some of these things to light. I mean, she brought the depression like head on into this. She brought the PTSD head on into this. And one of the things she brings to the forefront, and that's it's something that like we kind of read that this event happened, but we don't get to hardly ever see like the whole thought process with it. And that is suicide. Alexander is so clinically depressed, he is suffering such PTSD that he stands on the edge of life and he is seriously considers just going over onto the other side and just giving up because there's so much work ahead and he just doesn't have it in him to do it. And that just pulled my heart. I mean, to read everything that he's thinking, everything that he's going through, Mackie trying to help him, he pushes Mackie away so many times and he just wants to die. And I think one of the best parts about this is it's kind of a little girl in the store who really kind of brings him out, who does a really good job of pointing out that, hey, you are kind of cool. Look at this. Look at your hands. You know, you're like Iron Man. And he's just kind of like, who's this kid, you know? But as he thinks about it, and with Mackie right there by his side, he gets to contemplate, you know, okay, this is the life that I'm leading now, and it will never be the life that I had before, but I can still make it great. There's some aspects that I can still make it better. You have Alexander with his suicide, but you have Mackie with survivor's guilt, and that is a true thing, too. I mean, he is so guilty that he survived. He survived the IED unscathed, physically. Now, mentally and emotionally, he is a mess. I mean, the man that he loves is very hurt, and he's not. And so, while he's dealing with everything with Xander, part of the reason that he's doing it is survivor's guilt. And that's something that, too, comes at Xander. And, like, he has to now deal with this as well. While Mackie's also dealing with everything. So, there's really intense... I mean, the whole thing with him just standing on the edge of life was so brutal like just mentally and emotionally devastating and to know that soldiers every day are choosing death that's I think was one of the saddest things is that this is a complete reality and I just kind of like applaud Annabeth for bringing that to the story and making it such a critical point and such a nail biter and so intense that I just was like oh my gosh I can't stop reading. I'm pretty sure I had like an hour lunch that day. I'm really sorry. Because I just couldn't leave Xander where he was. And it's just a whirlwind of emotions. I mean, things are here. Things are there. You're going to be all over the place. One minute you're going to be crying because you're so broken. And one minute you're going to be crying because you're so happy. And this story just... Like I said, on one spectrum, it's brilliant, and on the other, it's tragically brilliant. And it's just so interesting to watch these two just kind of hammer out 
how they're going to deal with the depression, the PTSD, their survivor's guilt, and the suicidal tendencies. Resilient Heart by Annabeth Albert was released January 27th, 2015, and I give it 4.5 stars. Next book I'm going to talk about is Bombs and Guacamole. It was released May 6, 2016, so it's brand new by B.A. Tortuga, and I really enjoyed this book. Like, there are some really comical parts, and there are some really tense parts. And so the basis of this book is that you have three friends. There's Kyle, Dusty, and Nate. Kyle is recently married, so he's like the straight friend. And then you have Dusty and Nate, who have been in love with each other forever, but neither one acknowledges the other, and neither one has said that they are gay. So this is another one of those friends-to-lovers kinds of stories. So we have Dusty Laurie, who is now out of the military, and he is an ER doctor, and Nate Miller, who is a paramedic. So they're both kind of in the medical field, and they're going to constantly cross over. Like I said, they are best friends. So they're constantly together. And it's I loved that the name of the book was Bombs and Guacamole because... They eat so much, I mean, granted they're in the Southwest, but the amount of, I think, guacamole they consume is probably like a gallon's worth, at least in this story. And I kind of want to be right there munching with them because delicious. So Nate and Dustin have kind of just like flown through life, you know, flown through the military together. They're, they want to be together, but they haven't told each other they wanted to be together. They don't even know that the other one is gay. So that's kind of like how far in the closet they both are. Dusty's kind of stems back to something that happened in his childhood, and that memory has like stayed with him forever. And so he believes that he will not be accepted if he tells anybody. Nate, who really just has his mom, she's, she is just kind of like a hippie in her own right. And she is fabulous. I love Nate's mom. Like, I don't know if I could handle her as my mom, but um, she'd be fun to hang out with nonetheless. Dusty's parents have this huge anniversary, so Dusty's going to go home, and he asks Nate to kind of come with him. It's a little bit of a road trip. And while they're there, um, there's something that kind of happens one morning, and then they're both just kind of like, whoa. And after they're kind of the realization of what happened, both of their hearts kind of like break because they're like, we can't do this. What the heck? And so they finally get back in Dusty's truck. They're heading back home. And I mean, you have hours now, so what are you going to do? You have to talk about it. And it's just kind of interesting to watch like this whole dynamic of these two friends. Hey, one, we're best friends, and two, can we do this? And while they're trying to navigate the waters of from friends to lovers, a very upsetting event starts to happen, and it seems that there is somebody targeting medical personnel by setting off bombs. And so one of the first ones is a paramedic bus, they get blown up, and Dusty is just all up in arms. You know, like, whose was it? What are we going to do? But he heard from Nate. What's going on? Where is Nate? The entire time that they're building on their relationship, they're cr trying to keep it kind of a secret. But the thing is, is even Kyle, their best friend, kind of gets brought into the investigation of what's going on with these bombs. And it's really hard to kind of keep your feelings under wraps. And so eventually, like, things are starting to leak out. Here they are, you know, do they announce to everybody that this is how they, that this is what's going on, that they are gay, especially a Dusty, like with his family and this event that's happened in his past, it just kind of like has stuck in his brain. How are they going to accept him? How are they going to take him in? I mean, he blatantly remembers something horrific from his past that was said and the feelings that went with it. And then this, this is him. He is gay. You know, are they going to love him for who he is? So in the mix of, you know trying to get this relationship going there's bombs and then we have more relationship going and we have more bombs and the the inside terrorism just keeps blooming and blooming and while their relationship just keeps blooming and blooming and it all becomes like this big combustible thing it, the intensity of the book at times is extremely high but at times it's so laid back and so humorous i mean the the conversations, the banter between the three friends alone is great. And you get Dusty and Nate together, and you're just going to have a great time. I mean, get some chips and guacamole when you read this, because it's going to be a doozy of a ride. So we have Bombs and Guacamole by B.A. Tortuga, Dream Spinner Press, approximately 214 pages. And I'm going to give this one also 4.5 stars. It was really good. Bye.